In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome to each one of you, as we are really in the middle of these three days in preparation for the Triduum. Let's immerse ourselves even more with faith, with devotion to our Lord, in our Lord's passion, death and res resurrection, contemplating on it, asking the Lord to come into our lives. If we begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins, as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion that we may merit to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you sit? A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, Is it too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel? I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response shall be, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Our response. My mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Be my rock, my constant refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. My God, free me from the hand of the wicked. Our response, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my help. Our response, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. My mouth will tell of your justice and all the day long of your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth and I proclaim your wonders still. Our response, my mouth will tell of your salvation, Lord. Kindly stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. 
Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus, reclining with his disciples, was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. That to that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out. And it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me. And just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the cock will not crow till you have denied me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, yesterday in the Gospel, we heard of Jesus' last supper with his friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, a home where he used to, sometimes I would imagine, relax and rest a bit. He talked about religious things, about God. The same Lazarus whom he raised from the dead because he loved him so much. We had, today we have an account of the Last Supper with his disciples. That took place probably on Palm Sunday. This took place on Maundy Thursday. Yesterday, we had the first reading from Isaiah, and we continue in the Deuteronomy Isaiah yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Isaiah, a picture of what Jesus is going to do. He speaks of the suffering servant of Yahweh. Isaiah, the prophet, foreseeing everything, gives such detailed descriptions as we see. But let me come to the gospel, because it is so moving, and there's so much for us to reflect on. It's the Last Supper. Uh, now, we are accustomed to sit at table 
and there's a table and we have chairs. Time of Jesus, uh, they would recline. You heard that, the one reclining against him. It was the a table was there in the center, a wooden, like a wooden block on which they would keep the plate or, and eat from that with their hands. And uh, there were couches, there was a couch right round, the whole thing, a couch which was U-shaped, open, so that the person could come and serve the food over there. And Jesus would be at the head of the table, at the center of the U or the C. They were reclining in sen next to each other. They would normally uh, rest on the left elbow so that they would eat the food with the right hand. And they would uh, be next to each other, not reclining, not uh, against the table, reclining at angular uh, position. And therefore, the one on his right would be, uh, would have practically, he was a little below, his head on the breast of this person over here uh, on his left. And Jesus would have another person uh, on his left, on the right would be, uh, they say the gospel whom Jesus loved and most scripture scholars feel it is John himself, the evangelist John felt out of uh, humility uh, and out of uh, decency, he doesn't mention his own name, John, that I, John was the one whom Jesus loved he speaks, the disciple whom Jesus loved, he refers to him so now here you have Jesus once again very clearly knowing that he's going to be betrayed and saying, one of you will betray me. You can imagine the little shock among these small group of 12. They're just 12 apostles whom he's going to ordain very soon. And then uh, Jesus, uh, speaking intimately, a, a supper he had prepared for. The room was prepared. He sent somebody before, as we read, uh, saying, go and prepare the room for me where I'm going to have supper before the Passover with my uh, friends, but just apostles really, and uh, Peter, all of them looking at one, who, one, of, one of you, a small group, will betray me. I would imagine they were all embarrassed, but also angry, confused, what, what does he mean? But they knew that Jesus knew everything, and Peter makes a sign to John, ask him who it is. John his head is on Jesus' breast because he's that the side of Jesus. He says, who it is? Tell us. And Jesus says, the one to whom I will give this morsel after I dip it into the wine. Now the Eastern custom was the favorite guest, special guest would be served by the host. He would serve. We've seen that in some places also. Uh, the, the first principal serving is done by the host, by the to the main, and then afterwards the servants come and, and serve the others. And so Jesus now, as a sign of affection, dips the morsel of bread to the wine and gives it to, if uh, he gave it to Judas, that means Judas is probably, he didn't call Judas from somewhere else. I would imagine therefore Jesus, Judas was next to Jesus, a place of honor, right and left. Judas was taken there, gives it to him, and Judas consumes it. And the gospel say, and Satan entered into him. And it was night. Just three line, three words. It was night. Sisters and brothers, as we look to Judas who betrayed Jesus, we think uh, that it was night. It's always night when we depart from Jesus. Always night when we reject Jesus and go out to some other values. Always night when we leave him alone, his teachings, his principles, his life, and follow something else. It's always night in our lives when we don't, when we go far from Jesus. This is the time for us to reflect, for us to take out the darkness from your life and my life, for us to see how we could Continuously be in Jesus' presence and have his light in us. Peter and Judas goes out. Peter is there also. And when Jesus says, I'm going, you cannot come where I'm following you. Jesus is, sees very clearly, can see very clearly. He knows what's going to happen. He's going to be crucified. He says, and then Peter says, no, I, I am, uh, I, 
I'll follow you anywhere. I'll give my life for you. Jesus says, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. We know what's going to happen at the Passion, how uh, Peter's going to deny Jesus. We have in today's Gospel, Judas, who accepts the morsel, and it was night. He had decided to betray Jesus. Jesus said, what you have got to do, do quickly. Jesus saw what was in his heart, what was in his mind, the, I don't know, the resentment against Jesus, why, we don't know. And there was Peter, who was also going to deny him. When we compare the two, what's the difference between Peter and Judas? Peter also denied Jesus. He'll also go soon and say, I don't know the man. The same Peter. But Jesus understood his compassionate. He knew that Peter was a man who was impetuous. A man who wanted to follow Jesus. Wanted to be generous with Jesus. Wanted to give his life for Jesus. Was ready to... His mind was clear. But then at that moment when he was confronted out of weakness, out of passion, he just said, I don't know him. He also betrayed Jesus. One became the Pope. The other was rejected. We pray that if Jesus is compassionate, if only Judas had come back, even after betraying, even when the soldiers were there, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. He carried on his mistake. He carried on in stubbornly, Imagining, not understanding that Jesus knew everything. That Jesus was waiting to forgive him. Let's pray. Look at Judas. Understand uh, what he did. Look in our own lives. When do we betray Jesus? When do we go out and bring darkness into our lives? Look at Peter, who also denied Jesus. But cried, was repentant, and Jesus just with his eyes, they say, the gospel sellers, Jesus looked at him and the eyes met and Peter cried. He received forgiveness. He was repentant. Let us be like Peter, looking at our own lives, our sins, wanting to come back to Jesus and look at Judas and see what we have to avoid. Let's get even more deeply into the passion and death of our Lord. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family 
and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. Truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in, their one, in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, if you may merit to be quested on life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. To you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, 
as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, the accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Peace. Christ be with you. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Nourished by Your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you make us partakers of life eternal. You make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. May your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways. Make them capable of new holiness. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass then, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Don't forget, we are very close to the tree room. We must pray more and reflect more on the passion of our Lord. God bless you. We'll pray for, I'll pray for you. Pray for me too. God bless you. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe 
and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.